And I guess that goes on every day, doesn't it? And the question is, why? Why bother? I don't mean why bother to die, but why bother to get born? So if I were to pose that question to you in terms of your life, why bother being born and having lived these 80 years? Would I would have no answer except that I, I would have missed Herman and I would have missed Lynn. So who is Lynn in your life? My best friend. Person who has sacrificed herself for me. Person thinks I'm worth the trouble of being cared for. She's everybody, she's everything. She's the most devoted friend I have. And I would like to think I'm her most devoted friend. What else, in these 80 years, if you had not been born, what else would you have missed out? I would have missed knowing my brother and sister, which would have been a terrible loss. Terrible loss. I would have missed Jenny, my dog. She appeared in Higgledy Piggledy Pub. And that's what I say, she appeared in every book I did for as long as she lived. Uh, why was she so important? What, what was she like? Because, how do you explain that you love somebody or something? How do you explain? She was my companion for well, like 13 years. And I can still see her from the back. And then she died on Fire Island. And I would have missed Eugene. And I did some very good books, which mostly is an isolationist form of life doing books, doing pictures. And it's the only true happiness I've ever, ever enjoyed in my life. It's sublime. To just go into another room and make pictures. It's magic time, where all your weaknesses of character and all blemishes of personality and whatever else torments you fades away. It just doesn't matter. You're doing the one thing you want to do, and you do it well, and you know you do it well, and uh, you're happy. The whole promise is to do the work, sitting down at the drawing table, turning on the radio, and I think what a transcendent life this is, that I'm doing everything I want to do. In that moment, I feel like I'm a lucky man. I'm trying very hard to concentrate on what is here, what I can see, what I can smell, what I can feel, making that the important business of life. Just looking out the window, the colors that I see, reading Charles Dickens at night for an hour, little rituals I have of listening to Mozart. I'm learning how not to take myself so seriously. That what I'm working on, what I'd like to work on, it's, it's not earth-shakingly important anymore. I am not earth-shakingly important. So what am I saying? I'm just clearing the decks for a simple death. You're done with your work. You're done with your life. And your life was your work. I think what I've offered was different, but not because I drew better than anybody or wrote better than anybody, but because I was more honest than anybody. And in the discussion of children and the lives of children and the fantasies of children and the language of children, I said anything I wanted. Because I don't believe in children. I don't believe in childhood. I don't believe that this is demarcation. Like, you mustn't tell them that. Oh, you must tell them that. You tell them anything you want. Just tell them if it's true. If it's true, you tell them. I have adult thoughts in my head, experiences, but I'm never gonna talk about them. I'm never gonna write about them. Why is my needle stuck in childhood?
I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's where my heart is. <laughs>